Purify and Sanctify, Part 5, Our Mind. My name is Daniel Vallis and welcome to our channel. Today we're going to be covering page 38 in the Running for the Prize booklet. All of our mind. How do we give the Lord all of our mind? What is our mind? Our mind is what chews on different information. It covers our imagination, our thoughts, our understanding, our intellect. It's different than the heart. The heart's more of emotions, where as our mind is more of the intellect, the information that we chew on in our mind, our mind covers not only what we think about, but what we allow to influence our thinking. This can include books, magazines, television, music, movies, video games, toys, etc. Different things that influence our mind and our thinking also fall into this category of our mind, our brain as we think of it. The part of us that thinks, it also encompasses what influences our thinking too. And especially at this late hour, we've been called to shine bright and to put on the light, shine bright, be found with our lamps burning, put on the Lord Jesus Christ. So how do we do that with our mind? And this is actually very easy to do, and there's very specific instructions that we can find in Philippians 4.8. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, Whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. You know, the Bible makes it very easy for us. It tells us specifically, think on these things. And it's a very short list when we look at it. It's only eight categories and each one starts off with whatsoever things are true these are very broad categories it doesn't include just christian things and doctrine things it includes a wide base whatsoever things are true whatsoever things are honest it goes down through the list with that qualifier for each one whatsoever things anything of discussion any subject within this category think on these things. As long as it falls within those categories, think on these things. And obviously the opposite is true. If it's not in those categories, you shouldn't be thinking about it. You should not be dwelling on it in your mind. And further in practice, we shouldn't have things in our life that influence or promote the opposite of these. Whereas we should also have things in our personal life, our home and around us, that promote us to actually think on these things that we're supposed to. The Lord knows how we're thinking. He can discern our thoughts and the intents, so he can tell when we are giving him all of our mind, when we are armoring up to think the way he wants us to think. Think on things that are true and honest, just, pure, lovely. Whatsoever things have good report, if there's any virtue in it, if there's any praise in it, think on these things. Super easy list that's also super easy to memorize. So now that we know what we are told, what categories to be thinking in, and then that also covers what we shouldn't be thinking about, we need to ask ourselves the question at this late hour, are we putting it on? Are we putting it into practice? When we look back at the verse, what did he follow it up with? He said, think on these things, those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do said, think on these things, including those things which you have learned and received and heard, the things I told you about, the things you read in God's Word. And notice how he emphasizes it's not enough just to know truth. It's not just enough to know what you have learned and what Paul taught and the different instructions that they received and even the examples that he was for them. It's not enough to know truth. And this is what we've been seeing. Do it. If we know what we're supposed to be doing, let's do it. This is what Paul is emphasizing too. You know what you're supposed to do. Do it. Here's how we should think. Think on these things. In church, we've covered things that you should think about and things you should dwell on and what should influence your thinking. Well, put it into practice. And that's why we're going over this material. It's not enough just to know truth. Let's walk in truth. Let's make sure we are doing it and loving the Lord with all of our mind. And we love him with all of our mind by thinking on what he wants us to think about. So we need to regularly, daily, even hourly, review and ask ourselves, am I regularly thinking on and mentally consuming works of light? What I should be thinking on. And it's only going to fall within eight categories, so that's a pretty good 
easy way to check and keep the guard up and also flag if something is not in those categories too. Now the first thing he emphasizes is things that are true, which means not hid. There's going to be evidence for it. This is what we should think about. Not things that are false and incorrect, but what is true. You know, on YouTube you can find videos about all sorts of crazy stuff. A Christian should always be asking themselves, what is true? Let's think on things that are true. And let's make sure it's true. Same when we look in scripture. You'll, you can find all sorts of quote-unquote teachers on YouTube. What makes it true? Let's examine and let's search scripture. We need to have a readiness to search scripture. Prove all things. And we should always be asking ourselves the question, is it true? Not, well, it sounds good, or it sounds like what I want to hear. No. Is it true? We prove all things, and then we hold to what is good. We're not the determiner of truth, but we should hold fast to what is true, and we should always be making sure that we are latching on to what is true. And notice on the list of eight things, this was the very first thing. And usually if you can answer this question about a thought or an idea or whatever is proposed to you, if you can answer this question, is what I'm being asked to think about, is it true? Yes or no is really going to determine right there if you should even let it in or even consider it from that point anymore. And we could save ourselves so much time and hassle and grief by just answering this very first question about every single thought that comes to us throughout the day. Is this true? If I don't know, I'm going to do some homework. And I'm not going to latch on to it until I know whether it is yes or no. I'm not going to latch on to it. I'm not going to hold fast to it until I know if it's true. Again, take notice how this is the very first thing on the list. Things that are true. But secondly, right after that is things that are honest. Now what's the difference between things that are true and things that are honest? Well, things that are true deal with factual information. There's going to be evidence for it that can show whether it's actually true, correct, or incorrect. Honest is sometimes information is not being used correctly. The information may be correct, the information may be true, but how it's being applied is false, dishonest. And so sometimes we'll come across information presented to us, whether by teachers or instructors or people on YouTube or whatnot, and they may say something that is technically true, but they take it out of context or they apply it a wrong way, and they come to a wrong conclusion and they want you to come to a dishonest application of something. But also with that, sometimes we have to evaluate, am I being honest with myself? With what I'm thinking about, am I being honest with myself? Or am I just massaging things and fudging things to where I like it or it makes me happy? Am I being honest with myself? Am I changing facts that are true? Am I changing something and am I willingly accepting something that's not honest just to make me feel better? Am I being honest with myself? Is somebody else being honest with me? Is this idea that's being presented to me, is it honest or is it dishonest? And this is a checklist. Let's not think on things that are dishonest, even when we are dishonest to ourselves. We also shouldn't dwell on when we can tell others are dishonest with us. And we all know that by the first category, is it true? Once we identify that and actually apply ourselves to doing that, like the Apostle said, then we'll know if we're truly being dealt honestly or dishonestly with, including with ourselves. And the more that we study and think about things that are true and making sure, always checking that things are true, it makes the next one a whole lot easier too. Because it can be easier to flag within our own selves too, because you can say, hey, that's not dealing, that's not thinking honestly about such and such a subject because you know that's not true. You're lying to yourself by trying to convince yourself otherwise. And vice versa, it helps in the pursuit of truth because you have a desire to deal honestly with yourself too. I want to think honestly, so because of that, I'm going to do my homework to find out what is true. I'm going to have a readiness of my mind to search the scripture and to prove all things, so I know what is honest or dishonest. Things that are just, things that are right. Putting on the Lord Jesus Christ involves thinking like he thinks, and thinking in a manner 
that does not allow for sin and wrong. And so instead of dwelling on wrong and doing wrong and doing injustice and even having things in our life that foster and influence and promote wrongdoing and injustice, even the portrayal of it, that should not be in our thinking. We should not think on that. Let's think on things that are just, things that are right, things that are pure, things that are clean. And this makes a very good checklist and red flag. The more that we have this list memorized, when the devil tries to tempt us with an impure thought, we can immediately cut that off at the gate and say, nope, that is not pure. I am not supposed to think of that. I'm not supposed to dwell on that. I'm not going to regard that in my heart either. I'm not going to pass it on to my emotions. We're just going to nip this in the bud right now because intellectually, I know that's not pure. So we're just cutting that off right now. Let's change the mental channel. Let's dwell on things that are pure. Things that are lovely. And again, remember, the preface for all these are whatsoever things are true. Whatsoever things are honest. Whatsoever things are just. Whatsoever things are pure. Whatsoever things are lovely. If you need to rein in your thinking and think about puppies and flowers, that's, that's entirely agreeable. We should think on things that are lovely. And particularly when we're tempted to think on things that are not lovely, let's run toward thinking about things that are lovely. Because we are told to think on those things. And that's a great defense against when we are presented with the opposite. Things that are lovely, things that are acceptable. Especially when we consider, is this acceptable in Christ's sight? This reminds us of Psalm chapter 19, how David ended that chapter. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord. We should always have our thinking acceptable in his sight also. Things that are well spoken of and will be a positive and good mark on my eternal report. Whatsoever things are of good report. Everything that we think about is written down. We're going to have to give account for it all. God doesn't miss any of it. It does show up on our report card. So we have to always think about that I should think on things that are of good report, that will show up good on my report because it will be brought up one day. Let's think on things that are well spoken of that we will not be ashamed about or blush about in eternity. Things that will look good on our eternal report. Whatsoever things have virtue. Whatsoever things are praiseworthy. Whatsoever things are excellent. Again, this is a broad category. But Satan, you often find, will want us to think of things that are the opposite of all these categories. So when we know how we should think, it helps flag when temptations come up. Let's resist and let's fight them off with how we should think. Things that have virtue. Praiseworthy, excellent. Things that are praiseworthy, very close to virtuous. And this has the idea of commendable. Things that are good works, things that we should apply ourselves toward, things that we should be doing so much the more as we see the day approaching. Those are praiseworthy. And particularly the things that are acceptable in His sight and that fall in these categories. Let's dwell on those in our mind. Let's think about them. And let's give heed and attention to guarding that we do. Think about these things. Let's walk in the truth. And we've already studied before the works of mental darkness. The apostle laid out the works of the flesh. And if we apply that to this list that we know of what we should think about, we also find that the flesh will promote the opposite. The flesh will want us to think about things that are not pure. They'll want us to think of things that are evil, are dishonest about someone, things that are not lovely, things that are impure things that are unjust, things that are lies and not true, fornication, adultery, heresies, which is the opposite of true, things that are not of good report. These are what we need to be guarding ourselves against in our mind. When the thought comes up, when this information or idea, proposal, whatever comes into our mind, we can flag it when we know how we're not supposed to think because we can identify it right away as that is a fruit of the flesh, and I am definitely not supposed to be thinking about that category or that kind of subject. That's the opposite of how I should think. So we need to know, be able to flag how we're not supposed to go, what way our feet aren't supposed to go, our mental feet. Let's make sure we're not walking off and wandering, mentally wandering off in the wrong direction. Let's go in the right direction. Where does our mind wander? Where does it go? Let's make sure we love our Lord with all of our mind and make sure that we know where we are going. Which means we need to know our enemy, which 
is us again it's our flesh it's our own heart too so in order to armor up best and give the lord our best we need to know our enemy and we need to be honest and truthful with ourselves and we need to identify our main areas of weakness and everybody has different weaknesses and faults particular to them that satan tries to lure us with so let's identify our main areas of weakness make sure we cover the other ones but definitely identify our main ones first and let's have our armor ready. Let's have our enemy identification cards ready at the guard post so we know how to identify the enemy and who's going to be presenting themselves at our mental gate. And let's also have a list of who we should allow in our mind, what we should foster in our mind, and what we should also surround ourselves that will foster and promote and influence good thinking that is acceptable in our Lord's sight. So two things you can do, write out Philippians 4, 8, that little short list, write it out on an index card, laminate it if you need to, carry it around with you. And every time you are tempted, you can go over the list, especially memorize it, it's real short too, but say, hey, Satan, I'm not, no, I'm not going that way. Nope, we are going to be going the way we should in our mind today. And also write out and memorize 2 Corinthians 10, 4 through 6, which says, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations, and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Let's remind ourselves that we need to cast down imaginations that are against God that exalt themselves against what pleases God. Let's have a readiness. Let's bring into captivity every single thought. Every single thought should go through a mental metal detector, so to speak, a security checkpoint. Say, is this what I should be thinking about? If not, let's reject it. Let's cast it off. Let's take revenge on disobedience too. Let's cast down imaginations that are against God. Let's cast off that works of darkness. And let's put on, let's allow in, mental works of light, which will be best promoted by putting on Jesus Christ in our mind. Lord, what do you want? Lord, what is acceptable in your sight? Now let's bring every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Definitely write down these two passages, memorize them, and it will greatly, greatly help you get victory in your mind. The more that we can remind ourselves about these two passages, particularly of the short list of how we should think, the more we will readily think along those lines. And I've seen this in my own life. I've seen it in other people's lives that I've personally known and recommended it to them. And they've come back and said, hey, you know, putting it out on an index card like that and just thinking about it, having that constant reminder really works. The more we remind ourselves of how we should think, the more we will think the way we're supposed to think. One of the things I did to help me memorize it and just to remind me about it is I painted it on one of the walls of my house. That way, I can't miss it. Every time I pass by that way, I'm reminded this is how I should think. And it makes a great, great reminder. And it really makes your thinking easier because you know there are certain areas and it makes it so much easier to flag what is wrong thinking. And then the Holy Spirit will be able to remind you far more of, hey, you know you're not supposed to be thinking about that, or that is not a good report, or that's not being honest with yourself. You know, it makes it easier for the Holy Spirit to remind us and bring to remembrance what our Lord said and His Word says when we take steps to armor up. And when we memorize the instructions, He can help remind us of it even far more. Do some homework with these passages. It makes it great for Bible study with your kids, too. Contrast the two. Put it out on paper so you can mentally see this is part of truth, thinking on things that are true, being able to visualize, okay, what is true? Let's get this in our mind of what we should be bringing every thought into captivity, what thoughts we should be casting off. Let's contrast these two, the fruits of the flesh, the mental fruits of the flesh, how they can manifest themselves, but then also the way we should be thinking. Make a study of it, and the more you study it, the more it imprints it on your mind and helps you follow those that's how we armor up by actually studying it and like paul said do it then even just print it out and frame it hang it around your house and it again it helps every time you see it you remember oh yeah i should be thinking along those lines i don't just wander off in my mind i should be bringing my 
thoughts into captivity to be acceptable to my Lord. This is how we take what we know, what we have learned, what we have seen in other people's lives. This is how we do it. This is how we can walk in truth. When we armor up and we take steps to actually help us think the way we should. Have a battle plan. You know what your specific weaknesses are. Identify what kind of thinking will repel those mental attacks when they come. For example, fantasies. Those are Satan's lies and they aren't true. You aren't being honest with yourself and they aren't pure. Counter those attacks by thinking on things that are true, things that are honest, and things that are pure. When Satan tries to get you to think of a fantasy, for example, you can immediately say, Satan, that is not true. That is not true at all. That's just pure imagination that's exalting itself against God. And, Satan, you're not being honest with me, because it will never turn out that way. Sin always has consequences. You aren't being honest with me. Both you and I know it would not turn out that way. That's not true. You're not being honest with me, and that's not pure. We shouldn't even be going there. You know, the more we can resist the devil and actually fight back, the quicker he will flee. And because he'll be able to tell... This has absolutely no appeal to him now. That's how we resist the devil. We have a battle plan. We think in our mind the way we're supposed to think. And we make it clear to Satan, Hey, I know what kind of lure you're using right now. It ain't going to work. Because I'm being truthful with myself, I can identify that's a lure from Satan. I'm being honest with myself. He's trying to trick and deceive me. And that's definitely not a category we should be going down. Have a battle plan. And the more that we rehearse and remind ourselves of bringing our thoughts into captivity, the more it also helps us get back up when we do fall. When we do fall, we can ask for forgiveness. When we fall, we can get back up. And the more that we memorize this list and really focus on it and apply ourselves to it, the more we can see the reality. Yes, Satan lied to me. That last time I fell, Satan lied to me. I wasn't being honest with myself. That wasn't pure. Go down the checklist. Be honest with yourself. And that will help you flag it next time he tries to use it. And it will help you resist next time he tries to tempt you with that. Get back up. Go forward. Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things. Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me, do. Do it. Walk in truth. All of our mind. May the Lord give you wisdom on how to love the Lord with all of your mind, bringing every thought into captivity for our Lord. Loving Him with our mind and serving Him with our mind, first and highest above all else. Maranatha.